on the left hand side, there is uh, my USB uh, connector uh, to charge the device. On the back of my device, this is where the camera is, right in the middle of the device. And on each side of the camera, there are LEDs to control the lighting underneath the uh, device. On the top of the device, there's the power button. That's what we're going to press to turn it on. But before turning it around, we have also in the back a nice little handle, uh, which uh, to, which is if I'm going to flip it, it's going to turn on the device automatically. Or I, like I said, I can use a power button. So let's do that. So I'm going to flip the handle here. I'm going to take the handle. I'm going to flip it. And this is uh, in, inside. That's a, that's a reading position uh, of the device. When you flip it, it turns on the camera. It turns on the lighting. And you can start using it. So I'm going to take here a document. I'm going to place it right on top of my document. And I can start. Uh, moving it on my document and start reading as I wish. I'm going to see if I can get a better image quality. That's the thing here. I'm trying to film at the same time as showing a device, which is uh, we're going camera screen camera. OK, so as I said, we're in a, um, a reading mode, so I can move very easily on a document. If it would have been a book, we're going to try a book later. But I, it really slides comfortably on the document. It doesn't get hold up on, on anything on the document. And that's because of the way that the handle is shaped and uh, it's all rounded and it slides very perfectly on your document. I can use the plus button, so to zoom in. And that plus, if I hold it, it's gonna zoom in smoothly up to uh, 22X. This is my largest uh, uh, magnification. And my smallest magnification is gonna be 2X. So this is how I can zoom in or zoom out. If I'd like to freeze uh, what I'm looking at, I can just press just a tap on my orange button. This is going to freeze my image. So what's going to happen is that my image doesn't change and I can bring it with me. So somebody's asking in the Q&A, what is the name uh, of this again? Well, the device that I'm showing to you right now is called the Explore 5. And uh, the, uh, the webinar is on all the uh, um, handheld magnifiers that humanware offers. So we have two, which is the uh, Explore 5 or the Explore 8. And right now we're looking at the Explore 5. So as you can see, I, I clicked on my orange button, which I, I don't, I'm not seeing really there. I'd like to have a clearer image from my webcam here so that it's going to be better. Just hold on with me. I'm just going to put some lights so that we have a better image. There we go. That's a lot better, don't you think? Good. So we've pressed on the orange button, and I can move my device around, and it's not going to move. So I can have it stable uh, when I'm reading what I have to read on my device. If I click and hold on the orange button, that's going to save it to my gallery. So there's a pop-up that just popped up saying saving, and it's going to save it on the device. You can store up to a thousand images on your device. There's a lot of space, a lot of memory on these small devices now. If I go back to my live, I just uh, I just tap here and I'm back to my live mode. If I use the uh, button on my left, which is a contrast button, there's a couple of contrasts that are set: black on white, white on black, uh, yeah, black on yellow yellow and black, and back to color. So these are by default, but you can program these uh, to have more or less colors. So uh, there's also another way of using the device is uh, right now, like I said, we're in the reading mode, but what I can do is that I can flip my stand uh, towards the uh, right hand side. I just tapped on my button here. I'm just going to go back to color. And I can use it as a magnifier, a handheld, really a handheld magnifier like we're used to. So let's go. I go to a store and I'd like to read a price on a shelf. This is how I would do it. And it really helps on holding the device very securely uh, while uh, putting it straight. This is one way or the other way, like I said, is in the reading uh, position. 
So let's go to my menu. There's a couple of settings that uh, we can set. And also I'm gonna show you how to program more colors on my contrast button. And what you do is that you press and hold the contrast button and there's, there's a menu that's gonna pop up. Inside that menu, you can navigate through using the plus and the minus sign. So if I use a minus sign, it's gonna go down the list. So there's a couple here. So we're gonna go through each one of them. If I hit the plus, it's gonna go up. And the first option that I have here is my gallery. To select my gallery, I click on the orange button. Just click on the orange. It's gonna bring me to my first image. I only have one image because I only took one picture on this device. And that's the image that I, I saved uh, previously on my, uh, on my device. So once I select, let's say I select my image, I can zoom in uh, once selected and zoom in and pan inside the device, inside that image. If I go back, I just hit the contrast button to go back to my live mode. Autofocus, there's a couple of uh, settings here that we can use. We can have uh, a unlocked uh, autofocus or a locked uh, focus and um, depending on uh, the lock or unlock lock will not move and unlock will auto focus automatically are we okay natalie with all the questions or do i need to stop yeah we're okay with the questions but uh, i mean uh, while you're talking some uh, people are asking about updates uh, on the or new features on that uh, device on which device? On the Explorer 5? On the 5? Explorer 5, yes. Um, there was no really update on this, uh, the Explorer 5. Usually the Explorer 5, if there is an update, you have to do it manually. But the uh, latest update was uh, because we updated the camera inside the Explorer 5 because uh, the camera we were using was end of life. So that was the only um, um, update that was done. And there was also a couple of languages that were added like uh, Slovenian or Ukrainian you know, for the European uh, market. Okay, and uh, somebody's asking, how do we delete images from the gallery? You just press and hold on the orange uh, uh, button. So if I go into my gallery again, I press and hold on the orange button and two labels are gonna show up and there's gonna be a delete or a cancel. If I wanna delete, I press the plus button. If I want to cancel, I press the minus button. Okay, so let's do the plus button. That's gonna delete my, my image. And now I have an empty uh, gallery. All good? Thank you. So I hit again that contrast button and I'm, I'm back into my live mode. Let's go back to my uh, menu. So we did autofocus, you can lock or unlock the autofocus. The brightness, uh, again, if I wanna select the brightness, I tap on my orange button. I can move up or down the brightness so I can select it to nine if I'd like to and go back. Uh, there's gonna, not gonna be a lot of difference, but uh, that's what I did. But you can select uh, a lot brighter or less brighter. There's also an auto shut off and there's a couple of settings here for the auto shut off. The auto shut off will just put um, the device into sleep uh, and um, and wait uh, so that it, when you don't use it, it's going to fall to sleep and close it close itself to save battery. So you can set this to two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, and that's it. Uh, oh, you even have the one minute also, but by default it's five minutes. I'm gonna go back here. After that, you can set a preferred zoom. So if I click on that, preferred zoom is the zoom that you're gonna have when powering up the device. Uh, so I can set it to my previous zoom. Previous zoom means that when I'm, let's say for example, I'm using my device and I'm zoomed in at 5X. Well, it's gonna keep that 5X as my preferred zoom for next time I power up my device. But if I, if I select two, X, it's always going to reset itself to 2X each time I'm going to power up my device. Okay, so that's the definition of preferred zoom. Contrast, if I select this, preferred contrast, this is again a preferred contrast. This is the contrast that's going to be uh, set uh, for when you power up the device. So you can set it as previous, you can set it as color, or you can select any 
uh, colors or contrasts that are available on the device. Right now it's set to previous and we're gonna leave it like that. Um, you can set also the contrast on the menus. So if I'd like to have my menus on white on black, I can just go over it, tap on the orange button to select it and my contrast is already changed. I can also set enable uh, contrast and enable contrast is whatever contrast is going to be looping on my button, on my contrast button here. Okay, so if I go in here, I have a couple right now that are selected by default. So black on white, white on black, black on yellow, yellow on black. And then that's it. So you have that checkbox right on the right hand uh, of the screen, which tells you those are the enable contrast on my contrast button. I can add or subtract uh, contrast as I wish. And next time I'm going to use my button here in live mode, it's going to loop through the new contrast that I've added or uh, subtracted from my list. And again, to go back, just click on the contrast button on the um, left hand side. So that, that was for the contrast uh, menu. If I go back again, hit again that contrast button to go back. You have also the possibility of uh, turning on, turning off the lights. So if I select that, the lights are always on when I'm using the device so that it can be selected. I can select a low uh, setting or I can select an off setting. Preferably, you want the lights on to have a better image quality underneath the uh, camera. Languages, these are going to be the languages gonna, that are going to be set for your menu. There's several languages that we support. You can go through the list, but I uh, can't remember how many, but there's a lot. And like I said, the new ones, if I'm not mistaken, if this device has been updated correctly, I should have Slovenian and Ukrainian uh, on there. Those are my two last updates that I uh, had as languages. And the questions, Eric, we were yeah. asked how to change the languages. Can you explain that? Yeah, of course. Let's go back to my languages and I'm going to select that. And I'm French, so I'm, my, my primary language is French. Secondary language is English. So let's select French because I'm going to know where I'm going to be at in the, my menus. So what, what I did right now is that I went down the list using the minus button until my French or Francais, which is French, in, for, in French, uh, it's a word French for French, uh, is highlighted with that um, um, highlighter button. And then once that is highlighted, you just click on the orange button. And as you notice, the checkbox has appeared on the French uh, word. So I'm just noticing, um, Natalie, because we're live on Facebook also, I'm noticing also questions on the, um, the live uh, thread on Facebook. So um, maybe we can keep an eye on that. I know that uh, some people wanted to have uh, maybe some French answered questions. So if you can keep an eye on that for me, please. So, so I've selected the French and if I go back, now all my menu will be in French. I can try Spanish here. I see in the thread that uh, people want to try Spanish here. Let's try Spanish. Let's go down the list. Espanol, US, or uh, for Spain. So it depends on which uh, Spanish you want. I can select that. And my language is now set to Spanish. So I'm going to go back to US English. If I go down uh, the menu, uh, the next uh, item or the next option in the menu, um, it, you will have a display uh, option. Uh, these display option is depends on where you are in the world, all depending on the lighting that you're using also, because in Europe, usually it's 50 Hertz. It's going to flicker at 50 Hertz. So this is to get uh, the good, um, kind of uh, display on my uh, uh, on my screen or 60 Hertz usually in North America. Uh, that's what we use. So you can set that, but depending on the language you set, there are some languages we can detect if you're in Europe or not, and it's going to select uh, automatically the 50 Hertz or the 60 if you choose, let's say US. Uh, there's also an option to delete everything inside the gallery. 
if I want to delete, I just go to this option, and click on the orange button, and it will say permanently delete all files in the gallery. I can select again with my minus sign, say yes, and it's gonna de delete everything. In my case, I already had an empty gallery, which I deleted my image, uh, one image at a time. So you can do that like I just showed previously, but you can delete the whole gallery just by tapping delete gallery in the menu. Uh, after that, we have uh, factory defaults. If I select that, it's gonna reset my settings to factory uh, defaults. You can do that if you want. It's gonna delete everything in your gallery. It's gonna reset all the color contrast that have been programmed on my contrast button and everything else. So I'm not gonna do this here. If I go down, there's also an about menu and this about menu is very useful uh, if uh, you need help and you call the customer support and uh, you'd like to have some information. Uh, usually customer support will ask you what's the version on your device and this is where you're gonna get it. In my case here, I have 1.2.4.1586. Uh, I think that's the latest version that uh, just came out recently. There's also an option here to set the time and date because if um, if you buy uh, the Explorer 5, it will come with the default date and that date was just set uh, randomly and it was set now to an, uh, a, a, an earlier date or a closer date to today, but you still, you, you can still set that date and time. So you just select date and time and you can move around using the plus and the minus and then selecting what you would like to set. So here, so I wanna set the, I wanna put five instead of two for the month. So I'm just gonna move up here using the plus. So I just selected with the orange button and then using the plus to increase. Once I'm done, I just click on the orange button again and then press the minus to go to the other one and right, and today is uh, the 27th. So I'm gonna again, click on the orange button and increase that date here to 27. The reason why we have to do this, this device does not connect to uh, Wi-Fi or to the internet. So there's no way of determining what is today's date unless we uh, manually set it. Same thing for uh, the, uh, the time. So uh, right now, uh, I'm in, the, I'm in um, Eastern time, so I can maybe, de oops, I can select that by using the orange button and then decreasing the time here to 12. And I don't know if it's 1210, it's 1224. So I can do the same and put 24 here instead of 10. And I would have this, the good timestamp and date for my images that I'm storing on my device. So if I, I use my USB port that I've just showed you at the beginning, which is on my left hand side, connect this to the computer, I can transfer my pictures or my captures that I have stored on my device onto a computer and the timestamps will, um, will be correct. So this okay. is how you set the time and date. Yes. Perfect. Before you jump to other subject, maybe I can uh, tell you what are the upcoming questions. Uh, somebody asked uh, if we can uh, explain how to focus and, uh, and use the autofocus. So I know you're going to show it later. And, uh, and how we can write with that type of device. I know it is also something you're going to show later. Uh, we have a question that you can answer. It's, uh, does the device need to get a firmware update any now and then? Uh, it could happen when we add features, um, but usually we try not to add new features to these kinds of device. But if there is an update, uh, it is uh, published on the uh, Humanware website under support, and you can, you can compare the version that is uh, on the Humanware website under support again and explore, and you you can compare what you have on your device on what is the um, um, the latest version uh, on on the support web page. Uh, but usually for the the Explore Five, uh, like I said, the last one was for the uh, the two languages that we have have added and a support of a new camera. So if you don't need the two new languages, you don't really need to do the update. Um, so, so that's how you would do it. What you would do is that you would download, there's a procedure on there also that you can read in order to do that, but it's very simple. Uh, you download the file, unzip the file on your computer, use your USB cable, connect it to your device and to the computer, transfer the BRN file 
onto my device and use the power button just to turn on, turn off, turn off, turn on, and it's gonna be written um, software update and that's it, you're done. Um, so that's how you would update uh, the device if you need to. Okay, we have two questions in the chat. So mm -hmm. the first one is, uh, this looks very uh, user-friendly. How much does it weigh and does the case protect it well if carried in a purse? The case protects it well and there's also uh, the power button is a bit recessed so you don't uh, click on the power button when it's in the purse um, and, and so it doesn't turn on but also when you want to turn on the device either you flip it, you flip the stand like I just did and it's going to start automatically but you can also power it off. I'm just going to re reopen it but if I, can, if, I, if I flip my stand it's going to power off automatically just by flipping the stand. So by having it in the little case here, it keeps the stand from unfolding, so to turn it on. And also, like I said, the buttons are a bit recessed, so it's hard to touch, but if ever there's something that touches the power button, there's like a two second press and hold on the power button. So you really have to press on the uh, power button to turn it on. So it's, it's pretty hard in a bag or in a purse or something like that uh, to turn it on by itself. Uh, the weight, I uh, would have to get my spec sheets there um, to tell you exactly the weight because I don't want to lie, I don't, ha I, don't, I don't have it by heart. Let me just get my specs here. And to write underneath, uh, I'm going to show it more with the Explorer 8, which is more of a device that uh, can be used for that. The Explorer 5 is a bit small to, uh, to be able to write underneath. So uh, the weight of the Explorer 5 is uh, 0.5 pounds or uh, 228 grams. So that's uh, it's pretty light. Okay, so and the battery, the, the, by the way, the, ba the life battery, uh, the life um, expectancy of the battery, you know, that's gonna last a really long time. We say uh, if we use it uh, fully um, and 100% and of the time, we say about five hours of use, but I, I could have this device uh, no, sorry, three hours of use. If we always leave it on with the lights on and everything and use it, we can use it for three hours, full three hours. But let's say if I turn it off and I leave it in my bag and don't use it for, I don't know, a week. I've, I didn't use my Explore 5 for about, I'd say about three weeks. What was in my our first webinar? Uh, Nally, we, that was oh, the last time. Oh, it's about two it. months ago. Yeah, yeah it's so, the beginning of uh, the, uh, yeah. The COVID. The yeah. So I left it on my desk and at that time it was at 70%. I picked it up uh, last night to charge it up and it was at uh, it was at 20 or 30%. So uh, it it doesn't really drain uh, quickly. It's nice. It's uh, and as you can see uh, there's no boot time to these devices. You're already up and running very quickly. You don't have to wait for a splash screen to appear and then to load everything. It's, you're ready in a, in a couple of seconds, you're ready to, be, uh, to use it. But to answer the question on writing with these devices, it's a bit hard and even the competition because they're all, um, they're all the same kind of form factor when you lay it on, on a table. And the only way really to use this to write underneath, there's two ways. You can either go around the device, and that's pretty hard to do, or you can turn the device and take it sideways. So by doing this by sideways, let's say I, I can see here my four plus two, and I'd like to write my answer here. I can easily place my, my pencil underneath and write my six. So this is the way that I prefer using these devices when I write underneath the device, because going around the device, imagine with the eight inch, it goes, you have to go around and then you have to, uh, you're uncomfortable to write. But if you turn it sideways, you're more comfortable on using it. Okay. okay. Uh, if you want, I can keep on going with the questions sure. uh, regarding the battery. You talked about a lot about a battery, but uh, uh, how long is the battery life and uh, is the battery replaceable? Well, the battery like life, like I said, if I would use it fully, exactly like I have it on my desk here with my lights on, my camera on, and I'm actively reading and it doesn't power off, I can use it for a full three hours. 
Okay, so that's the battery life. If it's, uh, if it's uh, changeable, well, I'm gonna show you where the battery is. It's really on this handle. The battery is in this handle. It, you can change the battery, but not from a user aspect of things. You would have to send it back to humanware and humanware would open the, the, the uh, device and change the battery for you. But the battery basically is the handle. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question um, here. Uh, how do you upgrade Explorer A to set it? And how do you take a picture? With the uh, Explore 5 or the Explore yeah. 8, uh, we'll see it with the Explore 8. But basically, we did everything on the Explore 5. And you'll see on the Explore 8, we've kept almost the same way of proceeding or almost the same way of, uh, of using the device. So you won't be lost. But taking a picture, uh, I'm going to see here if I want to take this picture here. I would click on the orange button. Press and hold. And it's going to have the saving. Uh, uh, pop up that's going to say it saved it uh, inside your gallery and you can go and access it inside your gallery by pressing and holding a contrast button first item on the top is gallery tap on the orange button and then i can start zooming in that that image or and then yeah so i, I can view my image and i can't i can't select more image because i only have one and um, Let's go to another example here. I'm just going to zoom in. The reason why I couldn't select my, my image to zoom out is that I was already set on my minimum zoom. So if I go back to my gallery, now I want to select my second image. Now I can start. This is to delete. Okay, so I guess you can't. I thought, okay, so the images that are stored are stored in that uh, zoom uh, level. I th in the Explore 8, it works a bit differently, which we'll see in a bit here. Uh, but basically, that's how you would capture using the um, Explore 5. And the same thing when you're using the handle. Okay, let's go back to live mode. If I'm using the handle, I want to take a picture. You can hold it. Whoops, I lost my autofocus here. But I, I, this is my frozen image. I can go back. And I just click on the orange button. That's to freeze my image so I can bring my device uh, everywhere. It's not stored yet. It's only frozen. If I want to go back, hit that again, that orange button, and you'll go back to live mode. But if I'd like to store it, press and hold on the orange button, and it's going to save it inside your gallery. OK? Okay, we have uh, two questions that are about the same, uh, asking about how do, uh, what type of disinfectant or how do we clean the device? Uh, you can use, uh, we did, we did a, a procedure. I forgot what we put in the procedure. Um, Nali, can okay. you refresh yes. my memory? Yes, the procedure was put on the body app. So in the body app, if you type, um, Disinfect, disinfectant or cleaning device, you will have uh, the information and videos on how to clean a few devices. So you do it with uh, alcohol that is about 70% or more. Uh, you uh, spray it with a spring bottle on a uh, microfiber, just like Eric is showing right now, and you wipe your, uh, your unit with it. It is recommended to start from the back to the front, so uh, all the water that, uh, that is in the alcohol can be uh, evaporated. So alcohol, well, 70% or more. That's, that's why you put it on the cloth first, so you don't damage the device. Yeah. Exactly. So the Buddy app, just just to make a little um, a little side note here, but the Buddy app is is an application that you can download uh, from the Android store. And um, once on the Android store, this is so this is my phone here. I'm just going to start the Buddy app. Once you you've downloaded and you found it on the store, this is the Buddy app. You have the i2 guides. Uh, you can put some favorites in there. You have the support. Uh, contacts that you uh, can get there. You have the news and very soon we'll get notifications. So I have the latest version here. We're working on notifications so you can get notifications from humanware. But this, this really is, uh, is on the website, is on the Google store and also the iOS store. How do you call it uh, for Apple, the Apple store? Uh, so on the Android store, you can search for Buddy app 
uh, from humanware and you can install it on Android phones, Android tablets, uh, an iPhone or an iPad. This is very useful application uh, if you want to have all, like I said, the go-to guides, videos from YouTube, uh, technical support information, um, and, and this kind of procedure where we show how to uh, wash or clean uh, your device. Okay, we have a nice question. The person is saying that it might be a silly question, but I think it's a very nice question. Uh, why would you choose this over an iPhone? Uh, choose a magnifier instead of yes. an iPhone? Yes. Well, the, this is made especially for the image quality. I could, like I saw, you can change the contrast colors and you can, the camera, has, the image quality is a lot better than uh, what a camera can do. And also it's, a, it's on a stable stand. So imagine using your cell phone to try to read, you would be shaking all the time. Or and if you want to take a picture, you would be shaking again. You won't have that focus. But here I'm very stable and very comfortable to read it. And also <laughs> it saves a lot on battery. Uh, use. So yeah, I can use a device that is specific for my needs and my phone. Well, I can do everything else with my phone, but this is for my needs and I'm not affecting my battery on my phone. Uh, iPhones, you can use it for a lot of things and it's going to take up a lot battery. And uh, then once you want to call or do something with your iPhone, you have no more battery because you've used, you've used it for the camera and the, um, the spotlighting on it, then, and that light takes a lot of energy from your phone. But if you have, if you have a dedicated uh, device for that, then you're not using your uh, battery life of your phone. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question, uh, somebody asked if you can show again how to read a document from the image gallery. The image gallery, like I said, you access it through the contrast button, so press and hold. First option is a gallery. Press the orange button. You will go into your gallery. So I have three images. I'm showing the first one. If I want to increase, I'm showing the second one and I'm showing the third one. This is what you can do on the Explore 5. You can do something different on the Explore 8, which I'll show you. Let's jump to that now if I, if I can, because um, we're halfway a bit more than halfway of the, of the uh, webinar. And I wanna show you this uh, nice eight inch magnifier. Again, you have the same pouch. Again, not easy to unfold the stand, not easy to turn it on. So it protects it very well and it's easy to take out. And it's the same kind of way of functioning. You have, a, if I look at it here, I have three buttons in the front, the plus and the minus, and the contrast button, which is the uh, middle one. Uh, which is the orange button. If I turn it on my left hand, I have two ports on this side. I have the USB-C at the bottom. I have a, an HDMI port to connect to a bigger screen TV. And you'll have a little cap to protect that, to not to mix up between the HDMI and the USB. And then right on top of the HDMI port, you have the power button, okay? If I flip it on the other side, there's nothing nothing on the other side, but if I flip it in the back, this is where it gets nice and beautiful engineering here. I have two cameras, two de dedicated cameras, one to do my near viewing, so reading, etc., and one to do my distance viewing. So I can hold this device in front of me and I can start reading it, uh, reading distance. For example, let's go I, go, I go to McDonald's, I go to Tim Hortons, and I wanna read the menu at distance. I can use my, I can use my Explore 5 uh, to, to do that. I can just zoom in and see what's in the me, on the menu in front of me. There is uh, six LEDs to control the image quality and the, uh, the environment underneath the device to give you that perfect image. And that switch, there's nothing to do. It, it switches with the stand that I'm just gonna show you here. Again, like on the Explore 5, if I hold it here like that to show you, if I just flip my stand, my device turns on automatically. Again, you don't have that screen, um, the, 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 what you call it, the, the, the boot up screen and things like that. You're ready to go. You're in live mode right now. I can put my hand right here. I can start using, I can start panning and reading of my documents. What I'm gonna do for this one, because this is a very nice device because I'm just gonna close it here again. If I flip my stand, I'm at distance viewing, as you can see, and I can do some distance viewing. I can 
just tap on the screen. This is a touch screen device, so you can use my pinch and zoom to zoom in and then tap on anywhere on the screen to do my autofocus, to re-trigger my autofocus. And then I can pinch and zoom out where I can use my buttons to do my distance viewing. I'm just gonna turn this device around because what I wanted to talk to you about is that in front of those LEDs here, there's a lenses and these lenses are special lenses. They are uh, polarized lenses. What that means is that when the light passes through and comes into the camera, because there's one also on the, on the camera, that, that lens filters out the reflection from glossy paper. So I have a magazine here. You can find glossy paper uh, in, in magazines, for example. And uh, if, if, uh, if a device does not, not have uh, that kind of polarization lens, what it will do, it will give you spots where the lights reflect. And you will see that, especially on contrast levels. And um, right now, there we go. And you would see some white spots on here. Um, but uh, since we've added uh, these polarized lens, you don't have that, that glare or that reflection. And, and you, that's noticeable on the competition product where uh, they don't invest in those kinds of, uh, of uh, material or uh, lenses. And you can see, um, you can see those, that reflection. So that's very nice. Very nice also, say I'm reading my magazine, I can go from page to page without having uh, my, my stand uh, get, get a hold of my, uh, the middle of the page here, it slides very beautifully just because of that curve stand. And when I flip it, I jump automatically to my distance viewing and I can start using my distance viewing. Again, this is a, this is a touch screen so I can use my pinch and zoom to pinch in and zoom. And then uh, once I, I'm, let's say I wanna take a, a picture of this here, the, the capture button on this device is on the top here. So you just press once, that's gonna freeze my image. And if I press and hold, it's gonna save it. So if I press and hold, you, you'll get again that same pop-up with uh, saying saving. So it's gonna save into my gallery. Um, to go back to my live image, what you do, there's a little button on the top. I call it a floating button on the top right corner of the screen. Tap on that and you're back to uh, my live mode. To access my gallery, what you wanna do, press and hold the orange button, which is the contrast button. And again, you have that same look and feel of a menu that we had with the, the Explore 5. And the first option on the top is your gallery. And I can use the buttons to go down and up like I did with my Explore 5, or I can use my finger and touch the screen to select my gallery, go inside my gallery, and I can use also my finger to go and, and loop through uh, my images, okay? And once I, I've, let's say I selected, this is my image here, I can start zooming in, and now I can zoom in to my captured image. I can use a finger to pan inside my captured image, a very responsive, again, on this device here, I've put my anti-glare uh, membrane on here. So it's a membrane that you put on top of the glass and it, it prevents a reflectiveness of the light. So because it's not a, a matte finish because of that touch screen, uh, we give that uh, in the box also. So you can install that very easily and have that anti-reflection on the screen. And again, I can use my pinch and zoom uh, to, um, to uh, maneuver in my captured image. I can change also the contrast button if I'd like uh, the contrast colors on my saved image by clicking on the orange button, which is my contrast button. And it's gonna change through my program uh, um, preferred uh, contrast that I've set on my button here. To go back again, the top uh, left corner, uh, the button the back button is still there. You click on that and you're back to uh, your gallery and it can move around inside my images. Like I said, I got 19 images here saved on this one and I can, I can go through all the images in my gallery. And I just, I just press on the plus and it's gonna start zooming in or it's gonna access that image that's stored on my device. So I, I, I can zoom in or zoom out on that image. If there's a maximum or a minimum on my image that I can zoom in or zoom out depending on what I capture at what level I can capture because a minimum uh, zoom that I'm going to get on this device is 2x. 
So I can go up to that when I zoom out and I can, then I can zoom in inside that image. So when I zoom in, I get the same, the same kind of uh, behavior on my captured or my live image. Okay. So we were, yeah. Oh, uh, I thought you were finished on that subject because we're, uh, we have 15 minutes left. We have a few okay. questions on the okay. Explorer 5 and the Explorer 8 regarding distance camera or distance view. Is it possible to use it on the street, uh, at the grocery store? So if you would like to talk about like a bigger distance view, it would be appreciated from a few uh, people. Yeah, absolutely. You can use that uh, in in the um, in the marketing video that we have on the website. It's actually me using the Explore Eight, uh, and I'm looking at I'm outside. I'm looking at a bus schedule, so you can hold your device up uh, very nicely. It's very comfortable in your hands. If I flip my stand, I switch into my uh, distance viewing. I touch the screen. My my focus is done. But you can just hold it up. I don't have anything really on me. I don't know if I. Can, uh, it's maybe on this side, but uh, you can hold it and it's very comfortable. You can use the buttons uh, to control it or you can pinch and zoom on the screen. Touch again if you lose that, that focus. And as you notice here, when I have a, an autofocus for my distance, it, it autofocus very quickly once you're very zoomed in. What I like doing is go into my settings menu here and then go, select autofocus and we're going to select manual. Now with manual, I will be able to tap on the screen where I want that focus. See that little, that little circle, what happened there is that I want my focus to be done on there. That's, that's important when you have it's an object which is closer to the other one. If I put something here, put something, I don't know if this is gonna work here, but I'm gonna try to simulate it. But let's say I want to focus on the far, the, the, the furthest image or the farthest object. I just click on that further object and it's going to focus on that further object and not the closest object. So I like that because then you decide where the focus will be. Whoops, I'm a bit too close to the, the camera here. Um, but the manual autofocus, that helps for that. So if you have two objects, one closer to the other, I can select to either to either focus on that closer object, so it's gonna out of focus the uh, further one, or I can select the further object and it will focus on that furthest object so I have a better focus. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. It says, in your opinion, what is the furthest distance you are able to view and capture and still get a clear image? That's a good question. It all depends on how big you want this, the, font, the, the font size that you need to read. Um, the farther away, uh, this device will uh, zoom up to 33x. So the furthest away, uh, the smaller the characters will be. Um, but I would say maybe about 10 feet, between five and 10 feet would be, uh, would be something that, uh, that is a good distance. Again, I would use that manual focus so that I can focus manually because as soon as you focus really, really close, it's, it's like any other cameras. Let's say you take your camera at home and you want, or even your iPhone and you want to zoom in really, really close, uh, close to an object and you're far away. And as soon as you get to that high level of uh, zoom, the little movement in your hand will make that image shift. And that little movement makes the autofocus re-trigger. So I, I would say between five and 10 feet would be best. Okay. Uh, and how much does the eight inch weigh? Let me get the specs. Mm -hmm. I don't know those these numbers by heart. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. Uh, see, the, okay, so the eight inch uh, is uh, 1.3 pounds. So for the... Uh, the size of that big, nice eight inch screen compared to let's say the five inch and on the market, there's a lot of seven inch. It's, it makes a lot of sense to get that 30. It's, if, if you calculate seven inch with eight inch compared to the, the two screens, you get 33% more screen real estate. So that's a lot. And for a comparable price, I think it's really worth it. And the weight, we're, we're almost the same weight as a, as a seven inch. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question regarding the gallery. So it's uh, two sentences. Let me read it to you. If I take a color picture and then go to look at it in the gallery, it shows up in black and white. So that must be because of a setting. Uh, if I press the contrast button and I find a color image, but I would, it would be nice to be able to save it in color. So it, well, it, it, is it all depends. It all depends on your preferred contrast. So let me go back to my menu here, and I'm going to go down the list. There is a um, contrast, and there is preferred contrast. Now, if I've selected previous, it will keep my previous contrast. So let's say I access my gallery, access an image. It's in color, and I'm inside that image, and I change the color to white on black and then I go back. It's gonna keep that same contrast color. That's previous. But if you'd like to have a uh, color, then next time you'll go into your uh, image, it will, it will be selected as color. So it's because of that setting. Okay, uh, we have a comment uh, regarding the the iPhone. Uh, somebody says that we were before we were talking about iPhone, iPhones versus the Explorer uh, series. Uh, the person says also the iPhone magnification is very glitchy and not always reliable. If you were using your phone and needed to read something, you will not be able to do both things at the same time. So it's a good example of uh, the use of the Connect 12. Uh, the Explore, the uh, Explore I'm, 8 I'm or sorry, the Explore, the Explore Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, because I just answered somebody else uh, offline <laughs> regard, uh, a question on the Connect 12. I'm sorry. Um, I think we went through all the questions. But I, I'd, I'd like to address this. I, I'm, I'm looking in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the chat, and I'm seeing here, this would be great for a few of my students. You know, it would be great, yes. There's no intelligence in this, in, in this kind of device. Uh, it's only for, I'd say, spot reading, or it's not for a long period of reading, I would say. Uh, but yes, it's very portable, it does the job, and it could be useful for students. Uh, but if you wanna have more intelligence and have the OCR uh, Connect 12 or the Mac Connect would be, a, would be better. And uh, in the same lines, we're talking here of the Explore line. Uh, but we also offer the Reveal 16, which is right beside me here, if I switch here to the Reveal 16. Reveal 16 is, uh, works exactly the same way as the Explore line. So you have, again, that orange button and those two gray buttons, but it works exactly as the Explore 5 or the Explore uh, 8. So if you, if, if you go and take a look at one, if, you, if you're at a show and you see us and you take a look at the Reveal 16, You'll know how to use it if you have, or you already played around with an Explore 8 or an Explore 5. So we're trying to keep the same kind of uh, uh, look and feel and usability for our products. But the Reveal 16 is a bigger screen TV, a CCTV, foldable CCTV, which works in a similar way as the um, uh, Reveal, uh, the Explore 8 and 5. It has distance viewing and it has live uh, imaging. Okay, I think Eric, we went through all the questions. Uh, I maybe you have something else you want to show, or we can also uh, talk about the drawing, the draw. Yeah, the draw. Uh, well, we have only five minutes, um, but like I said, um, we went through all the uh, uh, the menus in the Explore Five. Uh, let me just jo just go a bit quick quickly on, on this here in the Explore. Um, Eight, you also have the possibility of uh, uh, having lines and blinds. Lines and blinds is that you have a line on the screen or you have the blinds that hide uh, the, the top or the bottom or both at the same time. So you have that option on the Explore 8. Uh, you, you can turn on, turn off the lights like you did on the Explore 5. You also have the option of putting the font a bit larger uh, so that you have a larger font. You also have the same languages that are offered on the Explore 5, on the Explore 8, and on the Rio 16, they're all the same language set. So that is also available. The display, 50 or 60 Hertz, again, that's there. Uh, the ability to delete the gallery, the ability to do a factory uh, default, and also an about menu where you can set the time and date and with the software version that you have installed on, on the device. 
So that's to conclude. Um, if you want to have more information, you can go to the website, uh, humanware.com, and you would have uh, everything you need there, all the specs and all the pricing information and all. And um, it was a pleasure showing these two products. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite lines because it's a very portable, it's uh, very light and very useful at the same time. Yes, so thank you very much. Have a nice uh, end of day. Thank you guys, stay safe.